When one thinks of countries that produce synthesizers, places like Japan, the United States, and Sweden come to mind. However, Thailand is now part of that list. So join us as we head to Chiang Mai to check out the nation's first modular synthesizer company. Introducing Siam Modular. Hello, I'm Pete, CEO of Sion Modular, and I perform under the name Red Drum. The kingdom of Siam, or Siam, is the, um, the old name for Thailand. And uh, we seem to be the first manufacturer there. We, we, it just felt like the right name. We have a, a team of Thai people working here. They're loyal, they're really good at what they do. and. Uh, yeah, most of them have been with me since near the beginning, you know. Speaking of beginnings, in order to understand the story of Siam Modular, we have to start with its founder's life back in the UK. So I started studying uh, mu music tech in about 98, and I turned up at college and it was a, a big modular synth. And I had a teacher there called Jeff Waterstone, and he had a, a synth on the market called the Orgone Systems Energizer. And he also made the, the, I don't know if he made or maintained this big modular, but he had us actually making, like soldering, making more modules for this big modular. So that, that kind of influenced me. I still don't know whether that was part of the syllabus or whether he just needed the cheap labor and somewhat to maintain his synth, but, <laughs> but it got me into it. And sort of with everything else, that just, uh, I started building from there, you know. A few years after university, Wallace decided to go on a trip far beyond the UK border. So I travelled I traveled around Southeast Asia, I was in Malaysia, Borneo, Thailand, Laos, um, Vietnam. You know, the, the usual backpacking sort of trek for, for, for about six months. And when, so when I got home, I just made, made a, a web development business really. I just, you know, secured a couple more clients, sort of got more established. It took about two years and then I, could, and then I was free. I was just, I was nomadic and I... I I came back to Asia, moved to Malaysia first, and I was just working from home. And uh, yeah, and it, I sort of moved. I was doing visa runs to Thailand, and it's just, it's, I just preferred it, to be honest. <laughs> so I came to Thailand, and here I am. Originally staying in Bangkok, Wallace soon realized, however, that the city of Chiang Mai more suited what he was looking for. It's a good balance, I think. It's not really touristy, but it, it, it is. I mean, there's a lot of Westerners here and Western influence and that, you know, and it's somewhere between like a rural place and Bangkok because I lived in I lived in Bangkok for three months and I like Bangkok, but I can go there for a weekend and enjoy Bangkok. You know, <laughs> Chiang Mai is a bit more chilled, but at the same time, it's a city with all the things a city has. It's a brilliant place for making stuff. There's metal shops, wood shops, CNC cutters all nearby. I, I can get on a bike and I've got a choice of three electronic shops within five minutes drive, you know? So just having all this around me, just, just it makes it, it's too tempting to want to make stuff. <laughs> Cyan Modular started from when I realized um, I could build, get PCBs printed in China and get like five of them just done at the time. So I'd, I'd build one for myself and put them on the internet and someone would buy one and it just, it just went from there. With the seeds of Psy Modular now planted, a somewhat interesting incident pushed its founder to turn his side gig into a full-time business. <laughs> um, I guess it was some government agency calling um, the shop downstairs and asking, why are we getting lots of posts? Is someone got a business here? Has someone got another business here? Um, and I was actually on holiday at the time and, and uh, the girl that works in the shop downstairs just said no. Because I didn't, I was building, it was, I was ordering lots of stuff to build for myself, you know. And that put a spooks up me, so I kind of had to, had to set up a company, I had to get my visa that way. And it just, and it just snowballed from there. You know, if you want to be legit in, in Thailand, you have to have a company to get your work permit, etc. As far as I know, in, in modular, yes, I, yes, we're definitely the first to make Eurorack modules yeah, yeah. in Thailand. I think the first two products were uh, a simple mixer and a low frequency oscillator because they're two, they're two that I built like years ago before I settled in Thailand. Um, and I was using, using those circuits in, in various different iterations. So I made them in our Takab format 
and that, that's the first ones that I put on eBay and started seeing, getting some interest for, you know. I think my favourite of all our modules is the VLH, because that was like a little COVID project. It was a col collaboration between myself and a friend called Steve here. So this was during lockdown, in the middle of COVID, and Steve's disabled, he's in a small London flat, shielding because he's on a vulnerable um, list and he's got this idea for a module. So he rings me up, we chat about it, we make it, it's a brilliant idea, we make it into a better idea and we just go from there. So I think it kept both of us a little bit sane through COVID when there, when there wasn't much uh, else to do, you know? Apart from making modules, SciModular also hosts events like Plexus, which again has roots back to its founders, UK Days. So as a DJ for a lot of years, um, played a lot of like uh, forest parties and squat parties around Newcastle in the north. One time someone found their way into one of the towers of Newcastle's Tyne Bridge. We had, a, we had a pretty cool party there and it was an excellent view from the top as well. Yeah, so Plexus, we did the first one just before Covid and then obviously we had to take about a two year break um, and then we've just done the second one. The reason for that is there's, there's many reasons. It, it helps get the, 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 the community together all the play. It helps, it drives me to um, create a performance to, to, get, to get better at that because I've got, a, I've got a gig that I'm looking forward to and in turn that drives me to um, develop more products, you know, I need, I need to be testing and playing with things and, and, this, and just having something to look forward to, a, a performance will do that, will make me do that. Otherwise I've got plenty of other things in my life that might shout louder. We do like meets as well. We have a, we have a lot of sort of more low key modular meets as well, which is which are fun, where we just get together and some people will. It's normally not for the spectators, but they they can people can come and spectate. But it's just a meet. Some people will perform. A few of us might plug together, plug in together, and sync up and jam. And they're they're really fun. More uh, less stress. <laughs> more more fun for, for the organisers at least, you know. It's a tight community, everyone knows everyone, you know, they go to each other's gigs, travel from Bangkok to Chiang Mai to wherever to, to play play with each other and meet up for jams. It's a really cool little scene, I'd say. So with events back on and modules in production, we asked what's next for the company. Yeah, so in, in the near future we have uh, we've just really completed a, a, a voice of synthesizer modules that make a mono synth. After that, or, or now in fact, we're working on a, a few different uh, solutions for uh, sequencers. So they may be available as standalone things as well, we don't know quite yet, we're not, not quite there with development, but it'll certainly be modules. So our, our, this is one of our sequencers, sort of early prototypes, we just thought we'd make it big to start off with, it's a bit easier and we also get a sequencer for the rack. These are MOTM, uh, mother, mother of the modular. Um, so when I started building 20 years ago, I looked at the sort of formats that were, that were around and what was popular, and this seemed to be the, the main one, especially for sort of DIY builders. Um, Eurorack, I can't remember what I knew of that at the time. I think it was mostly just the dope for stuff. I don't think there was too many other people using that format to, to design or, or manufacture, you know? But yeah, it's big. It's, it's, you know, this is the same format that like um, ELP would use, you know? <laughs> So we just, yeah, and most normally there'd be like a metal plate, but we just went with this rustic, rustic wood look, you know. <laughs> you can get on our website, scionmodular.com. We also sell on uh, Reverb, Etsy, eBay, um, or you can come right into the workshop here. We're always, we're always happy to have visitors. We can demo stuff, we can play a bit, we can jam, you know. <laughs> so that concludes our look at Sia Modular. But join us next time where we check out another modular synth company based in the capital of Bangkok.